he had a weakness for the women and the women had a weakness for him. Football hero Ray Carruth drove away and left Sharik Adams and his own son for dead. He could not have done this heinous crime. He couldn't have. Couldn't even been a part of it. You know, a man that's making that much money and, and he's doing good and it just doesn't make any sense to me. Second time in a decade, the nation is witnessing a trial of a pro football star in connection with a brutal murder. First it was O.J. Simpson, and now it's another young man from California. His name is Ray Carruth. Carruth was accused of ordering the murder of his pregnant girlfriend. We had not had a crime quite this shocking in Charlotte in my memory. Professional athletes had been a real feather in our cap and uh, to imagine something like this happening was, was very shocking. Things like that just don't happen. Police allege that on November 16, 1999, a hit team under orders from Carruth ambushed Sharika Adams in the middle of the night. What made this crime so disturbing was that Adams was pregnant with Carruth's child. I was basically sitting in this position reading and uh, I heard the gunshots and I went to my back door to look across the fence at Ray Road to see if I could see anything. I saw her car in the intersection of the neighboring street. lights were flashing and and uh, then the car pulled into my driveway and then it turned and come across the front of my lawn and uh, and the horn continued to blow. She's at Ray Road at Calvary Church. That's what she's telling me. She said Wessex Square earlier. She's okay. pregnant also. All right, man, we'll get the ambulance on the way to you, okay? Of the five shots fired at Sharika Adams, four hit her in the neck and back. She was rushed to Carolina's medical center, where the baby, a boy she named Chancellor Lee Adams, was delivered 10 weeks prematurely by cesarean section. It could very well be that her phone call saved the life of the child. There's no telling how long it would have taken to find her if she hadn't been able to make that phone call. As investigators gathered evidence, Carruth voluntarily spoke to police and reportedly pointed them in the direction of two men named William Watkins and Michael Kennedy, who in turn reportedly pointed the finger back at him. Then on Thanksgiving Day, one week after the shooting, as Adams lay clinging to life in her hospital bed, police made a dramatic announcement. This investigation has resulted in the arrest of the below-listed person, for conspiracy to commit first degree murder, attempted murder, and shooting into an occupied dwelling. Excuse me, you got anything to say about Sharika? Hey, don't you want to say anything about whether you did this or not? So an awful lot of people wondering. Carruth was taken from his home at dawn that morning and arrested. People within Charlotte were, you know, already upset about the horrific nature of a pregnant woman essentially being assassinated and then to have it um, be a high-profile person who was arrested made it even worse if that was possible. We don't know what's going on. We don't know any of the details of what's really happened, but 
uh, you know, we, we really feel for the, the families involved. It's, it's got to be a, a terrible thing to carry today. And, uh, you know, it's just a sad day. So I don't know any of the details or anything more than uh, I'm, I'm disappointed that it's come to this. The following week, the Carolina Panthers suspended Caruth. Just everybody just pray. You know, just pray. This is, this is just not right. This is not something that um, we were expecting the arrest or anything like that. Anybody who knows Ray knows that this is just totally out of character. This is not my son. Caruth's three accomplices, Watkins, Kennedy, and a 19-year-old named Stanley Abraham, were also arrested and would remain behind bars in lieu of one and a half million dollars bail each. But on December 6th, after 12 days in the county jail, Caruth posted a three million dollar bond and was released. One week later, the stakes changed. My friends said to me, they said, well, I don't understand why you're so upset. Everybody knew that she was gonna die. And I started thinking to myself, well, was I really being realistic or I just never thought she would die. On December 14th, Sharika Adams died after being in a coma for nearly a month. Police immediately issued a new arrest warrant for Caruth on upgraded charges of first degree murder. And they went to Caruth's house to try and figure out where he was and they couldn't find him and gradually more and more time started going by and it became quite clear that he wasn't around. Caruth did something nobody expected. He took off with a local hairdresser named Wendy Cole in her Toyota Camry under the cover of night. She was described as having a long-term friendship with Ray Caruth and um, throughout the night, the police continued to search. By him bleeding and running, that really didn't make him too good. So, I mean, he could have took a better way about doing it and came to um, the public first or came to whoever he needed to come through to clear his name first. You run because you're afraid. I mean, you just, the fear of your freedom. I mean, you've done nothing wrong. Everybody's hung you out to dry. They've already convicted you. They didn't try you, they just convicted you. People don't know what fear will make them do, so they need to ask themselves, in this case, you're 25 years old at the time, you've never been in trouble, um, you've never had dealings with the law, you've been locked down for 12 days by yourself, what would you do? Would you just jump up and go back to jail? Ray Carruth was on the run as his family, the Charlotte police, and ultimately the FBI would hunt for the fleeing wide receiver. Coming up, those close to him search for clues. And the more you heard, the more the story started to evolve, the more you just were like, this is something not right about this. And I don't really think that he's capable of having her murder. Ray Carruth had vanished from Charlotte. He was now an accused murderer on the run, charged with the gruesome crime of killing his pregnant girlfriend. But the image of this mysterious outlaw is in stark contrast to the gentle, dedicated young man that his friends knew. Clearly he was charming and uh, did have a lot of women friends. Ray was a lot of fun to be around. I believe he was in kindergarten and he was asked to draw a picture of what he wanted to be when he grew up and he grew himself standing between football goal posts. That dream would become his ticket out of this working class neighborhood where he grew up in Sacramento, California. He carried that idea with him throughout his young adult life and did everything he could to pursue that dream. I couldn't believe my eyes. Dave Hoskins remembers the first time he saw Ray Carruth in action. It was just days after Hoskins had arrived at Sacramento's Valley High as the new head coach of the varsity football team. And I saw this guy fly around the track, and I, I asked one of the coaches, who is that? And they said, that's Ray Carruth. <laughs> He's a sophomore. He's not on the varsity. I said, yes, he is. And <laughs> we're going to bring him up. 
can quick seal guys, can I? The veteran high school and college coach had a feeling he was looking at a future NFL star. I think he caught 11 balls for 221 yards, and uh, people were kind of shocked. How could a 15-year-old sophomore have that kind of a game? Was it a one-game thing, or, or did this kid have a, a career? And, and he just went on from there doing the same types of things game after game. In his three years under Hoskins at Valley High, Carruth broke school records, made the All-City team as a sophomore, and became an All-American as a senior. Great speed, very seldom hurt. I mean, he took some hits, but he was very, very physical kid. Uh, would never want to come out of the game, even though he was dinged up. Uh, he, he was very tough. Very tough, but apparently not without passion. And we got beat in a very important game. He felt it was his fault. And the following Monday, we're talking to the team after practice. We played on Friday. He's in the back of the group crying his eyes out. That's three days later. As Carruth's star status grew, he turned to his coach, who began to fill a void in his life. His uh, biological father went overseas real soon after he was born. Uh, his mother soon after that married his stepfather, and that marriage broke up when Carruth was about 14 years old. Our neighborhood was a middle-class neighborhood. Everybody worked. I worked. She did her best as a single mother to, uh, to raise him and instill values in him. I raised Ray from a young man to a great man. My son has morals. He has values. Ray didn't smoke, drink, or do drugs. He was a mentor. He loves children, and children love him. Carruth was on his way to a football scholarship at a major college, but academically, he wasn't making the grade. His junior year, uh, we got a copy of his grades. He had a 1-5-1. Very embarrassing situation. He had to go back and take freshman classes to sit in there with 14-year-olds uh, as a, a 17, 18-year-old senior. And, and he's a, a star on campus, and here he is in freshman ca classes, but he knew that that was his only way out. And he did it. He did perform well enough in high school to win a scholarship to the University of Colorado, which is, was a real milestone for his family. None of his cousins had gone to college, and it was a real point of pride for the folks who knew him in Sacramento. And a popular homecoming prince of Valley High would leave behind a string of broken hearts. He was very popular in school. Uh, his friends and family even used the term ladies' man to describe him. Extremely good-looking kid. Very good looking kid, and they, yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> but one of those many high school girlfriends would later become the mother of Carruth's child. Long before Sharika Adams would come along, he'd recklessly succumb to the charms of another young woman named Michelle Wright. At age 20, Ray Carruth had become the father of a baby boy named Raylando, and while he and Michelle Wright did not get married, Carruth was by all accounts a proud and happy father, with every reason to believe he could give the child a good life. Little Ray stays in Sacramento, and I do keep in contact with my grandson as well as his mother. Carruth was already a star at the University of Colorado, both as a football player and as an English major. And again, Carruth was breaking all kinds of records. He ran track at Colorado uh, his first three years there, and uh, he was in what they call the NFL 100 at Stanford University that he won with track guys that are prospective NFL guys in his junior year. Carruth knew he had a big future ahead of him. Cut. That kindergarten drawing of a dream, that childhood fantasy of being a pro football player, at age 23, it all came true for Ray Carew. He had signed a 3.7 million contract with a, with a signing bonus that was over a million dollars. <laughs> the Carolina Panthers had snapped up the Colorado sensation as a first round draft pick in 1997. When I think right now, you know, they, they want me to speed along, and hopefully when we get in the game, you know, I'll be able to produce just so they can feel comfortable with putting me in. He did so well during his rookie season that there was every reason to believe that the Panthers' hopes when they drafted him that he would become a star. There was every reason to believe that that was going to happen. Carruth had a brilliant first season, leading all other NFL rookies with 44 catches and 545 receiving yards. 
just to see him sitting on the sidelines and, and sitting there with all those NFL receivers and quarterbacks and he blended right in. I mean, he was sitting there and they were having a great time and uh, that, that's really a proud moment to see a guy that was with you and now he's going on to the, to the ultimate. Off the field in Charlotte, Carruth maintained the reputation he had in high school and college. Definitely a ladies man. Lisa Crawford is the owner of Crawford's Bistro, a favorite Charlotte hangout for Carruth and his Panther teammates. I saw him with different females here and there. Uh, sometimes it was hard to tell who was a friend and who was a romantic interest. <laughs> Ray's favorite table. He ate here most of the times when he came here. If it was available, he wanted to sit here. Um, he was kind of quiet, uh, but other times he was sort of the life of the party. It just so happens it was at a pool party at the home of former Panther Ernie Mills that Carruth is said to have met Sharika Adams. By all accounts, he was immediately taken with the striking beauty. And I think it was the way that she carried herself, the way she dressed. She was a very, very pretty lady. And I think that just about any room that she would go into, men would look. Caruth reportedly asked a friend to introduce him to Sharika. They apparently did hit it off right away, and they ended up at that same party spending 40 minutes talking together outside the house. That conversation would lead first to dates, a relationship, and then a pregnancy that would result in tragedy. When we come back, the secrets of Sharika Adams and the bizarre capture of Ray Carruth. A beautiful young woman is dead. A promising football star is on trial for his life. The tragic murder mystery involving Sharika Adams and Ray Carruth began as an innocent romance in June 1998. He and Sharika were closer than others. I saw him with her more than anyone else. Uh, their relationship seemed to be a little more intimate. I would say they're two peas in a pod. Crystal Clark is a realtor who helped Carruth buy this quarter million dollar house in one of Charlotte's nicest neighborhoods. She was also friends with Sharika. They met four years ago through the realty business. She was in Atlanta a lot. She was still living here in Charlotte, but traveling to Atlanta also. Her brother was trying to get into the music industry, and she was interested in being a producer. So she was actually trying to help him. And after she found out she was pregnant, that led her back to Charlotte. So I think she was still trying to do the real estate. Sharika Adams grew up just outside Charlotte, and like Carruth, she was raised in a working-class neighborhood by a single mother, Sandra Adams, and Sharika was also determined to succeed against the odds. She was very articulate. She was very smart, very motivated. Anything that she set her mind to, she could do it. Anything. At a very young age, she was always, you know, professionally dressed. In high school, Sharika wore skirts and blazers. She wore her hair up in a French roll. And I always used to tease her about how she looked like one of the teachers there. Lakia Quick looked up to Sharika. They met in 10th grade when Sharika approached Lakia, the new kid in school. They were fast friends. Oh, my friendship with Sharika was wonderful. She was like my sister. Um, I could go to her for advice. I'm getting emotional, but yeah, I could go to her for advice. She had this powerful presence. I don't know what it was about her, maybe her smile or something, but whenever we would walk into a room, like, all eyes would be on Sharika. She was a beautiful girl, you know. I always saw the men talking to her or she talking to them. Despite all that attention, Sharika seemed to have a special interest in Carruth. You know, from a woman to woman, she liked Ray. With her being pregnant, and of course, at the time, we assumed Ray Carruth. I knew that she really had to care a lot about him to get herself into that situation. Carruth's defenders are quick to point out that Sharika was not the typical girl next door. 
They point to a part-time job she had in a topless club. There were definitely complications in this case because of it involving a professional athlete and a woman who, had, it was later revealed, had worked part-time as a topless dancer. And now, sources close to the case say one of the three men charged, along with Carruth in her murder, William Watkins, was actually a bouncer at another topless bar called the Men's Club, where Shurika once operated the gift shop. And it's also been learned that Ray Carruth wasn't the only famous sports star Shurika knew. In Charlotte right now, because we have the NFL and the NBA, there are a lot of athletes that are here. So it was pretty easy for her to run into them. Among those she was said to know were basketball stars Larry Johnson and Shaquille O'Neal, along with rapper Master P. Some friends that uh, my colleagues have talked to during that time period in her life say she started uh, becoming interested in the world of professional athletes and in meeting athletes. After a sensational rookie year, Carruth had fallen victim to the so-called sophomore jinx. He broke his foot the second year and sat out a lot of the season, and he has high hopes for his third season. He's in the third year of his four-year contract, and he really wants to, um, as far as we know from his friends, he wanted to make up for the lost time the previous season. But before the 99 season even started, Carruth's personal life had taken a turn for the worse, starting with some bad investments. I believe the court records say he had lost $31,000 in that pyramid scheme. And then there was a lawsuit involving a, a house purchase. The, the people who were selling the home sued him, saying that he had backed out of the home purchase and they were seeking the, the lost value in their home from him. Along with those financial problems, word leaked out that Sharika Adams was pregnant and that Ray was the father. I remember asking Ray about it. You know, I heard a little something, something. You know, and he said, Crawford, what'd you hear? Um, I said, you might be a daddy again. And he said, oh, somebody's been telling secrets. Sharika was godmother to my daughter, and she came to the hospital, and she literally, like, would not give me my baby. She fell asleep with her in her arms, and she just held her and caressed her so passionately. And when she found out that she was pregnant, you know, she was very excited about that. And I know a lot of things changed for her once she found out she was pregnant. For a start, she's believed to have immediately quit her second job as a stripper at the Diamond Club. And it seemed to those around him that Ray Carruth was looking forward to being a dad again, too. He seemed very excited about the baby. And I know that he was making preparations as far as his home and changing things around. He was going to take responsibility for this child, which a lot of people don't know. He went to the doctor with Sharika. He didn't duck his responsibilities, as they always say black men do. Um, Ray was the epitome of what I feel represented what a black man should do as far as having children out of wedlock. The day after the shooting, Sharika's grandmother even told a local reporter that Ray was supportive of the pregnancy. He have been so concerned about her doctor appointments and all of this and that he's been a nice, nice gentleman in this pregnancy. But then more problems arose for Carruth on the football field. That good 99 season he was anticipating got off on the wrong foot when he injured an ankle. He sustained another injury his third season and had to start sitting out some games. So um, that, that again was hard for him to take according to his friends. Some days he came in and he was just sort of into himself. You could tell he had you know things on his mind. During that time period, a lot of his friends that we interviewed here in Charlotte said they did seem to notice a change in him, that it, um, he was down about not being able to play, that he felt perhaps the coach was treating him a little differently, and um, he wasn't meeting his dreams that year. Police theorized that his financial woes, combined with worries about his future in the NFL, and the prospect of a second child support payment drove Carruth to deadly desperation. They said he hatched a plot to kill Sharika and the baby, and Carruth allegedly put it into action on the night of November 15th, when he and Sharika went to a local cinema to see a 9.45 p.m. showing of The Bone Collector. 
After the movie, they went back to his house, where, according to police, Karuth made a phone call. The couple then left the house a little before midnight. Sharika followed Karuth's white Ford expedition, but she too was being followed by three men in a third car. Then around 12.30 a.m., after driving just a few miles, that third car pulled alongside Sharika, and a gunman fired five bullets through the driver's side window. What's wrong? Did you have an accident? No, she's been shot, medic. Okay. I regret having to uh, tell you this afternoon that Sharika Adams, 24, died at 12.43. She was just a, a great person. I, I miss her so much. On December the 14th, 1999, warrants were obtained for the arrest of Ray Carew for the murder of Sharika Adams. Efforts to locate and arrest Mr. Carew were unsuccessful. We later found out that he had checked into a Best Western Hotel in Tennessee. The information was relayed to FBI agents who in turn obtained an unlawful flight to avoid prosecution warrant. Agents uh, <coughs> responded to the uh, Best Western Motel in Wildersville, Tennessee. Uh, they set up a uh, surveillance there. The six FBI agents located Wendy Cole in her hotel room and after guaranteeing that they would not harm Carew, she agreed to cooperate. The surveillance subsequently uh, led to the uh, location of uh, Mr. Carew in a uh, trunk of a vehicle. Carew was curled up in the fetal position with a handful of candy bar wrappers and $3,900 in cash. He'd been in Cole's trunk for 24 hours. At 5.45 p.m. Central Time, Ray Carew was arrested by FBI agents at this Best Western Motel. Where did you first get your information from that he was at this hotel in, uh, in Tennessee? If we would not divulge the source of the information that the uh, homicide investigators received. In fact, that information came from the most unlikely source, Caruth's mother. She said she was trying to save her son's life, that she believes he would have been killed if she hadn't done that, that the police might have killed him. Wendy Cole was later charged with aiding a fugitive, and Carruth was taken back to Charlotte and booked by Charlotte Mecklenburg police, who alleged the hit on Sharika Adams was carried out on the orders of Carruth himself. They claim the evidence is overwhelming, including Sharika's own words from the 911 call and handwritten note she'd scribbled from her hospital bed before she died. Coming up, Ray Carruth goes on trial for the murder of Sharika Adams. November 20th, 2000, North Carolina's case against Ray Carruth began in Mecklenburg County Superior Court. It wasn't the trial of the century, but for Carolina and the world of professional football, it was the biggest event of the day. Certainly there was a lot of anger about the nature of the crime and about the, um, the blot on Charlotte to have something like this happen here. There's something that happened around in, the, in this community. It really kind of maybe turned some of the fans away. Everybody I've talked to, you know, really thinks he did it. So it looks bad. <laughs> Lead prosecutor Gentry Cadill laid out the case against Carruth in compelling whispers. The most dramatic witness, he promised, would be the victim herself. The evidence will prove that Ray Carruth planned the murder of Sharika. Sharika Adams was not supposed to live past 1230, not supposed to be an eyewitness. Ray Carruth sat unmoved as the prosecutor revealed the state's evidence. As Sharika's voice echoed from the 911 tape, the courtroom listened as she fingered Carruth as her assassin. Where's he at? In the car in front of me, and he's closed down and put my foot up and said, I'm this. And then where's he at? He just left. Okay. All right, what's his name? Ray Carruth. What's his name? Okay, what's his name? Ray Carruth. 
Churika continued to implicate Carruth that night. Nicole Michaels was the paramedic on the scene. Do you recall the police officer asking Sharika a question? Yes, yes. Ma'am, do you know who shot you? Did Sharika respond to the police officer's question, Ma'am, do you know who shot you? Yes, she did. What did she say? She said, Ray, and she said, my baby's daddy. Prosecutors remained focused on following Sharika's trail of clues to the hospital. After surgery, Sharika, unable to speak due to a breathing tube in her throat, reached for nurse Tracy Willard's clipboard and indicated she had something to communicate. In one of those notes, Sharika refers to a suspicious phone call that Carruth made while they were at his house after the movie. In court, Nurse Willard read from Sharika's hospital notes. Before we left his house, he called someone and said we were leaving now. Sharika had no idea at the time who Ray was talking to, but police would identify that person, and one year later at the trial, he would take the witness stand and present some of the most damaging evidence against Carruth. He was going to take her to the movies and for me to stay in that area, and he was going to call me after the movie was over to be close by so I can see them, and when I follow him, that his friend was going to do the rest. Michael Kennedy, the driver, also charged with first-degree murder and facing the death penalty, swore under oath that he did not make a deal with the prosecutors, but rather was testifying to clear his conscience. He confessed to purchasing the murder weapon that night with Watkins, the trigger man, and identified Carruth as being directly involved. And he asked me um, if I knew where he could get a gun at. And at the time, my friend was selling a gun, but he gave me $100 and told me to take Watkins to get the gun. Kennedy asked Carruth why he needed a gun. His response, prosecutors say, provide the motive. He was telling me about um, this girl that he had got pregnant, which I found out later was Sharika. And he was saying that um, she was trying to juice him for money and he was already paying like almost $5,000 in child support and he didn't want to pay another 5,000 in child support and um, he said the guy, which I found out later was Watkins, he had paid him to beat up Sharika so that she would lose the baby. And uh, he was saying that he hadn't done it yet and he had already paid him. And um, he said that he needed a gun because he wanted to do it that night. The evidence against Carruth, according to prosecutors, was damning. The dying words of a young mother-to-be, the testimony of a killer, all seemed insurmountable. It was now time for Carruth to tell his story. Coming up, Ray's biggest play, the fight for his life. cannot see Ray Carruth masterminding any anything of that serious of a nature. I, I can't see those words coming out of his mouth. For Ray Carruth, who had remained silent since the death of his girlfriend, this was the time for him to make his voice heard. He could count on a strong defense team and loyal friends. For the people that didn't know him, they could easily believe what they've heard. People that know him say, no way. Couldn't happen. This couldn't be him. He could not have done this heinous, just cruel crime. He couldn't have. Couldn't even been a part of it. I know Ray and what kind of person he is. I know about his history with children and how he's willing to help somebody else. And 
I don't think that he had anything to do with killing Sharika. Defense attorney David Rudolph attacked the 911 evidence. He suggested that Sharika was deliberately led into implicating Karuth. During the 911 call, it is not Sharika Adams who first suggests that Ray Caruth was somehow involved in this because he was in front of her on Ray Road. No, it's the 911 dispatcher who makes the first suggestion about that. Medic, okay, how did this happen? Call her. I was following my baby's daddy, Ray Caruth, the football player, medic. So, you think he did it? First words out of his mouth. He also suggested Sharika Adams was not the most reliable witness to the details of the crime. You'll hear things like, medic, did you see the person that shot you? Call her. I'm eight months pregnant. She's worried about her baby. She's not worried about the person who shot her. She's trying to survive. Carruth's defense largely depends on his lawyer's efforts to shake the credibility of the men in the car from which the shooting occurred. They began with Michael Kennedy, an admitted drug dealer, and suggested to the jury that even though Kennedy testified without immunity, his motivation for pointing the finger at Carruth was designed to reduce his own culpability. And you knew, sir, that you needed to come up with some story that gave you an excuse for having driven the car and bought the gun, didn't you? No, sir, I told them the truth. What they told you was, well, the DA is not going to come down, but if you give us a statement, we'll put in a good word for you. Isn't that about what they told you? I don't know about the good word part, but. You don't? No, sir. Well, you've been involved with the system a number of times before, haven't you? Yes, sir. You've had serious charges dismissed before, haven't you? Yes, sir. So you knew how the system worked, didn't you? Then attorney David Rudolph turned his attention to Watkins, the trigger man. They presented the jury with Watkins' jailhouse confession to a sheriff's deputy that he shot Sharika out of anger over a botched drug deal and not as a result of a contract hit. Is it true, sir, that on one occasion when Sergeant Riddle came to your cell, didn't you say to her, Sergeant Riddle, I shot that girl, but it was Ray's fault? Did you say that? I don't remember. Did you say if he had just given us the money, none of this would have happened? No, sir. People of the jury, the Sergeant Riddle coming in and tell you that lie, don't pay no attention to it. At the time, Sharika Adams was fighting for her life. Did you say, I hope the bitch dies? Did you say that? That's the bitch I was talking about. Oh, I see. Ray Carew. Oh. That's the bitch I was referring to who got me into this. When he says, I hope the bitch dies, uh, and Sharika Adams is there in the hospital, uh, I think it's pretty clear who's he, who he's referring to, Glenn. Uh, you know, if you if you like to bet your house mortgage on uh, the credibility of uh, Mr. Watkins, uh, good luck to you. In a further attempt to discredit the state's evidence, the defense point to questionable police tactics. Mr. Carruth's defense has challenged the use of statements by the co-defendants because of the circumstances under which they were taken and they are questioning the reliability and truthfulness of what, the, what is in those statements from especially Mr. Watkins and Mr. Kennedy. The burden of proof in this case remains right here. It's not just getting over the 50 or even getting down to the goal line. You gotta score a touchdown. You got to eliminate all reasonable doubts. Former Panther Ray Carruth's fate was now in the hands of a North Carolina jury.
Ray Carruth has spent most of his life performing in front of large crowds of cheering fans. He has spent this year isolated in a jail cell with his future resting in the hands of the five women and seven men who fill these chairs. They will decide if he lives or dies. The truth always comes out because you have 12 people, normal people, common sense, can look at the evidence and make the right decision. I think at this point, it's a big question mark to me, exactly what will happen. It can go either way. After a trial filled with intrigue and emotion, friends and family of both sides await the jury's verdict. To me, it would, it's like you're, it was my own son, and, and you, you, you don't want to believe what you've heard. You're hoping that there's a serious mistake made. That uh, I, I visualize him in my mind every day in that cell, just sitting there going to waste, and I, I know he's got to be going crazy. Along with it. Sharika dying, I think people need to remember also that he had a child by her, and he has some feelings for her. And so as far as thinking that he's this cruel animal the way the public is making it seem or the media is making it seem, he has feelings and that he's grieving about the situation also. We miss my daughter very much. Uh, we do know that she's in heaven. The trial has been hard, long process, the hardest thing that I've ever had to go through. I would like to send peace and blessings to the Adams family. I think they have um, portrayed such strength and dignity throughout all of this, and I really respect them and honor them for that. I pray that, you know, the best comes out of this trial, especially for Chancellor. The baby was put into the custody of Sharika's mother, Sandra Adams, and eventually, after several months of hearings, they reached a child support settlement with Ray Carruth. He, he was seeking visitation with the child, which he has had in the jail. He's been able to see the child. And um, he has set, uh, agreed to a settlement where the sale of proceeds from his house will be divided between um, Chancellor Adams and the child he has in California. Ray Carruth fought hard to become a star athlete and perform on a national stage. But curiously, in the biggest, most important moment of his life, he remains silent. For the 12 people who will decide his fate, his decision not to testify, while perfectly proper under the law, is seen by some courtroom observers as a mistake. The jury's verdict will determine whether Ray Carruth is wrongly accused, freeing him to continue the life he's worked so hard to achieve, or guilty of masterminding the murder of Sharika Adams, making him the first active NFL player in history to face execution.